Welcome back to the shop, my friends. Steve here at SKS Props, and this is part five of my Gears of War cosplay armor build series. Now, in this build video, we're gonna be doing all of the final prep before we get to paint. That's gonna include all of the final details, as well as these buckles, some additional texture to add to the foam, just so it doesn't look so plain, and of course, we have to have our battle damage. Now, all the additional details on this are, of course, made out of my HD foam, which you can find over at Blick Art Materials. I wanna show you what it takes to finish this armor off let's go ahead and get started to start with the buckle at the top i'm going to take part one and transfer and cut that out of some four millimeter foam this piece is going to cap the shoulder strap and cover up all the layers that make it up part two is going to be cut out of some 10 millimeter foam notice how the back side is cut at an angle that way it can rest on the chest and still butt up to the shoulder strap Part three is a detail strip that'll be glued on top of part two, and this is cut out of some four millimeter foam. A small strip of two millimeter foam is glued right in front of part three. With these details, you could add whatever you like. Don't feel that you have to completely follow my design. The front of the buckle is going to be part 4, which is cut out of some 10mm foam. Notice that the top of this piece has been sanded at an angle. An additional strip of 2mm foam is glued onto the top of part 4. I cut some very thin strips of foam. These are going to be glued and layered to the front of part 4. The nice thing is all these details are really gonna pop once paint and weathering is applied. The class for the belt is gonna be made up of multiple pieces including parts five through 16. To start this process, part five is gonna be traced and cut out of some four millimeter foam. Part six is gonna be a detail piece that goes on top and this is gonna be cut out of some two millimeter foam. All of these pieces can be sanded and heat sealed before being glued together with some Bob Smith super glue. I draw on rough placements of parts five and eight, but to make up the gap between these two, part seven will go underneath, and this is cut out of some two millimeter foam. With part seven in place, part five can now be glued down to the chest armor. Part eight is gonna be traced and cut out of some four millimeter foam. This is gonna have multiple pieces glued on top. Part nine will make up a strip of two millimeter foam that'll be glued to the front of this piece. Part 10 will be traced and cut out of some four millimeter foam and part 11 will be cut out of six. Once all these stack pieces of foam have been glued together, it does a really good job of giving the illusion of a functional buckle. Now be aware that once all these pieces are glued down, the belt does need to attach to them, so that does need to angle towards the middle of the back. Once I'm happy with the placement of all these, I can measure it out and start to replicate the process on the opposite side. I add a few pieces of extra foam just to bulk up a couple of the sections. The next piece of the buckle is gonna be part 12, which will be cut out of some four millimeter foam. Now if you need to, change the angle of this piece so that the rest of the belt sits correctly. Part 13 is a block of 6mm foam. Part 14 will also be cut out of 6mm foam, but it will have an additional detail piece on top. For part 15, I score some 2mm foam with a hobby knife. By applying some heat with my heat gun, it will open all of these cuts up. I can now take my template and trace onto this piece the size and the shape that I need. Just like the tinfoil technique, it's a fairly simple process, but it does a great job adding additional details to this piece. Using some super glue, part 15 can now be glued on top. Part 16 is gonna make up the very back of the buckle, and this is also cut out of some six millimeter foam. So now I can glue the two halves together using some contact cement and super glue. With the two halves glued together, I can now sand down the transition between the two pieces. This is going to allow the armor panels that I glue to the sides to sit properly. 
Starting in the back, part 17 is going to be traced and cut out of some 10mm foam. Using my rotary tool, this piece is going to be beveled and heat sealed. Now before I glue it down, I cut where this piece lines up. This is going to allow the belt to feed underneath. More contact cement and super glue is used to adhere part 17 into place. The same process of cutting and gluing is applied to the opposite side. Parts 18 and 19 are going to make up side panels. Both of these are going to be cut out of some 10mm foam. Now depending on your armor, you may need to change the shape and size of these so that they fit you. Part 20 is going to make up the belt, and this is going to be traced and cut out of some 4mm foam. Just like before, I'm going to score the foam with my hobby knife and then heat it with the heat gun. This is going to allow all those cuts to open up and give it a really nice detailed but uniformed look. This section of the belt can now be glued right behind part 16. The rest of it can be glued down, but notice that I feed it under part 17. Part 21 is going to be a strip of 10mm foam. This is going to attach to the chest armor underneath of the belt and it also goes underneath part 17. Part 22 is a small spacer, again change the shape and size if necessary. Part 23 is going to be the belt cover and this is going to be traced and cut out of some 6mm foam. Using some super glue it's going to line up with this seam right here and the belt will go underneath. I can now do all of these same steps to the opposite side of the armor. And again, feel free to make custom side panel pieces for your armor. Mine here are just a suggestion. Now I can take part 24. This is going to make up the belt that's going to wrap around the lower back. The same process of scoring and heating the foam is used to detail this piece. Now the templates for these belts are just a suggested size. Feel free to add or take away any foam that you don't need. Now for me to be able to get in and out of my armor, I'm going to cut along this seam. I'm going to be using rare earth magnets to attach my two halves together, but you could also use parachute clips or velcro. After drilling some holes smaller than the magnets, I then lay in some super glue. I can then press the magnets into the holes and it's just tight enough of a fit to keep them in place. I ended up using 9 magnets on each side because I love overkill. And that's the sound of a fantastic hold in almost seamless armor. Jumping back onto the details, part 25 is going to go into the middle of the back. This is going to be traced and cut out of some 6mm foam. Part 26 is going to be traced and cut out and glued directly on top. A 10mm half round foam dowel is going to be glued down the middle of this piece. Part 27 is going to be traced and cut out of some 4mm foam and this can be glued on top. Part 28 is going to be cut out of some 10mm foam. I did give a bevel to this piece just to make it a little more interesting. Some small strips of 2 and 4mm foam were added for additional details. To finish off the part 17 panel, parts 29 and 30 were traced and cut out of some 4mm foam. These pieces were all beveled and heat sealed before being glued into place. Moving back to the shoulder straps, I used some 15mm round dowels to simulate a hinge. Then I could take part 31 and trace and cut that out of some 6mm foam. This piece was lined up with the middle of the shoulder strap as best I could. The clasp for the front is part 32 and this is cut out of some 4mm foam. To finish off the top, part 33 is also traced and cut out of some 4mm foam. Small blocks of 10mm foam were cut and glued to the side of the round dowel. 15mm half round dowels were glued into place to cover up the seams that made up the shoulder straps. And like I said before, feel free to add your own details to your armor. To bulk out the shoulder space, part 34 is going to be traced and cut out of some 10mm foam. 
This piece is going to be rounded over on either side with the rotary tool just like the next seal. Once painted this will hopefully look like a softer material compared to the metal. The belt for the upper back is made out of multiple pieces, parts 35 through 41. I decided to cut all of them out ahead of time just so I could assemble them as I go. After all the pieces had been sanded and heat sealed I could start gluing them to the back. Notice that as I'm gluing these down I'm gluing additional strips of 2mm foam on top. This varying detail in the layers is going to be a lot more prevalent once paint is added. The belt section attaches at the top and then wraps around and glues underneath. Part 39 is then adhered together and then glued in front of this piece. The whole point to this and Gears Armor in general is just to give it a stacked look. This adds to the overall look that it could and should be functional. So again for your armor add as many strips and additional details as you would like. For the rivets on this armor some will protrude and some will inset. Both will be created using some leather hole punches. Only do this process when you are completely done heat sealing the piece. Otherwise the heat will make the foam bounce back and it will erase all of these details. As I'm pressing the punch into the foam I'm adding quite a bit of pressure. This will help it emboss down into the surface and once I plasti dip it it will retain the shape. For the protruding rivets I'm adding just a little bit of super glue and the circles directly to the foam. Having two types like this I think is more visually interesting than if all of them were inset or all of them were protruding. And I'll add some photos at the end of the video that way you can freeze frame it and look and see where I added rivets throughout the piece. This same riveting process is also applied to the back of the armor. At this point the foam is really smooth and I'd like for it to have a little bit of texture. So I'm going to be doing the tinfoil method but similar to how I had done for my Elden Ring armor. Most of the time you'd want to heat up the foam and press the tinfoil into it. That'll give you a really strong detail. But the other way is to heat up the foil and press it onto the foam. This gives you a completely different look, much more like pitted metal as it embosses certain areas. It's more of a time consuming process and make sure you wear an oven mitt or something like that so you don't burn your hands. For the battle damage I selectively choose areas and I use a stone bit on my rotary tool. Since I can't go back and reheat this foam this helps cauterize these cuts much more than a sanding drum. And like I always say when you're adding battle damage and wear, select areas on the armor that would realistically receive this treatment. So you all can see the final details that I added to my Gears of War cosplay armor set and be sure to swing back by for the next video because we're going to be taking this from raw foam, adding some paint which is definitely going to bring it to life. Now if you are building any of my builds or utilizing HD foam be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD Foam.